Depending on how much attention you've been paying in the architecture industry, spiral staircases are becoming a phenomenal piece of art. What's going on guys? My name is David Tomic and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to teach you exactly how to document this set of spiral stairs. We're going to make it a quick, easy ArchiCAD 24 video. We're not going to go into every single detail of the spiral staircase. So hopefully you're going to be able to follow along, learn all the tips and tricks, and then be able to use this spiral staircase in any of your projects. I'm also going to split this video up into two parts. We're going to have the ArchiCAD 24, which comes out on the Monday, and then we're going to have the twin motion render, which is going to come out on the Thursday. If that's something that interests you, subscribe button's down below, like button's down below, smash them both, help it with the YouTube algorithm, and let's not waste any more time. Let's turn around to these screens. Okay, so like always, we're starting this with the typical three panel format. You're gonna have me down in the bottom left hand corner. You're gonna have the inspirational image we're looking to create above me, and we're gonna have the program to the right hand side of the screen. So like always, we're gonna start with Arcad 24 opening with a brand new template. I'm in Australia, so we have the Australian select template available here. Just use whatever template you have. We're gonna be tr using the bare bone basics for this. So clicking OK, starting with a new project. With this tutorial, I'm not gonna go and document all the wine racks in the back. I'm not gonna show all the cornices and the ceilings and all the works. I'm just really gonna focus on this spiral staircase and the traditional and easiest way of making it. So let's start with a slab tool, a generic slab. We're gonna click on the geometric shape and let's draw, let's say a six by six room. So. By clicking on that slab, clicking Control D, we can move that freely. So zooming in by scrolling on the mouse, we have our slab, we have our room, and I'm gonna start by creating some simple walls. So selecting the wall tool, and I'm just gonna change it to a generic 90 mil stud partition. Changing it there, making sure our walls are on the wall's internal layer. Remember, layers are extremely important. I'm just gonna draw by flipping this wall, by pressing the P command, flipping it around, holding shift, going all the way around and drawing my room. So if you've never used ArcCAD 24 before and you've just done all those steps, congratulations. It was super, super simple. Now, if you wanna see it in 3D, you can either click up here or right click show all in 3D. And there we go. Like you see in the image, we have four walls, we have a slab and we're good to keep going. Jumping back to our ground floor plan, like I said, this is gonna be a quick, very rapid fire tutorial just to teach you guys the absolute basics of spiral staircases. Now, looking at this inspirational image we have on the left-hand side or above me if you're watching this on YouTube, it's probably about a meter wide stairs and then a 500 trunk tree and another meter wide stairs, but we wanna round up to probably about three meters. So we're gonna use our circle arch tool. We're gonna to select this secondary image over here. We're gonna click once and we're gonna start typing in 3000 by 3000. Then we're simply gonna click on the image and drag it all the way across to center it in the center of that wall. And we're gonna do the same thing on that side there. So now our circle is perfectly centered to this room. We're then gonna go across and grab the stair tool, holding the space bar, clicking once on and creating our first set of stairs. So if we go into 3D, you'll see that we've created our first set of beautiful spiral stairs with multiple landings along the way. You may or may not like the landings. It's completely up to you how you draw it with or without landings. If you don't want those landings, basically what we have to do is find the up down position and click that node there. And then we're gonna rearrange the steps so we can actually drag it back around that circle and you'll see how everything changes. So the further we drag it back, the less steps we get, the more steps we get, all depends where you position it. So if I bring it back a little bit, click there, go back into our 3D, you'll see that it's slightly changed. Now, if we do that same process again, but do it to a much more intense level, all those stairs are gonna completely change once again. So now we only have one single landing up here and we have a beautiful set of stairs. Personally, I really don't want any landings in this design, so I'm gonna keep going until I completely diminish all the landings entirely. And there we go. Now I basically have that first very large step that we see on our image, all the stairs coming up, and we have our landing at the top. Now what we wanna do is actually just change the settings of this staircase so we can create something magical and beautiful. By clicking Control or Command, depending on what system you're on, with the T button, we open up our settings and we can go through all the settings to create something a little bit different. 
So in the structure, as you'll see this main image change as we go through it, you can select the flip, the flight, <coughs> You can select the flight structure and have an I-beam underneath with metal plates supporting it. You can have it cantilevered through the concrete or you can have stringers on either side, which is exactly what's depicted on this side here. You can do the exact same thing for the landings as well. So we'll do both of those as a stringer on the side. Jumping across to the flights and the stringers, here's where we can actually manipulate them and make them work to our advantage. So I believe they're probably about 300 millimeters high and 35 millimeters thick you'll see how they automatically change there to give us something that we're looking for. I'm then gonna to move to the landing itself and do the exact same settings there. So we change all of those settings. Now, if we come over to the finish, we can actually change what we see. If we want the tread and the risers only, we can just click on these individual finishes. So personally, I only want the tread on this design here to be very similar to our inspirational image. Coming across to the tread, you can go through this, you can change the thickness, the bull nosing. There's a whole bunch of different um, settings that you can initiate if you want stair risers, stair strips, um, milled recesses. You can really go through this and add lots of architectural detail. It is a very, very useful setting on all of these stairs, but all we're really gonna do is just click through and take a look because there's nothing really for us to do. So now if we click OK, we'll see our stairs completely change right before our eyes. And what we now have is a beautiful spiral staircase with a timber edge beam wrapping all the way around, creating our beautiful structure. So now what I'm gonna do is open up those settings again, and I'm gonna go through these one by one and override everything at the very end. So I'm gonna to skip to the end, override the beam surface and override the secondary support. I'm gonna just change them all to white in this instance. So paint glossy white and repeat the same steps for the remainder of them. So there we go, I've gone through flights, landings and tread, changed them all to glossy white, clicking okay. We'll see our stairs once again change that beautiful white finish that we can render in twin motion if we want to. So that'll be in the next tutorial coming this Thursday if you're interested in watching how we render this beautiful set of spiral stairs. Now to create the right handrail that we're looking at, we can actually do that straight away when we're creating the stairs, but I find it a little bit more challenging, a little bit harder to actually correct it as you manipulate the stairs and make them work to how you see best fit. So I actually like to create the individual railing after point by point. So by default, it's on associative and associative and what I like to actually do is slowly move up this spiral staircase about 300 millimeters at a time and just clicking after one after the other. I find that this method gives a much more realistic look because glass isn't often curved unless you really have a massive budget for it. So it's usually segmented and it's in a consistent pattern. So it doesn't exactly have to be 300. I just roughly click where I think 300 is. It's quite easy once you get into the routine of it. I'll work my way up to the top and skip through this boring part. And there we go, I've created my spiral staircase handrail using the railing tool. All I'm gonna do is open up the settings again, Command T, to be able to work my th way through these settings here. So the railing tool is a pretty self-explanatory object to use. You have everything pretty well diagrammatically pictured. What we're looking for is a single glass plane without anything in between. I'm not gonna go model the detail at the bottom. So what we're gonna start by doing is clicking on the rails and removing all of them. So just clicking the minus tab until all those rails completely disappear. Now that all our rails are gone, I'm gonna come across the panels. I'm gonna introduce a brand new panel, clicking right there to create our panel and then introducing it as a glass panel with no fixings. So I'm gonna show no frame, I'm gonna show no fixings. It's completely frameless. It's tied into the bottom of the stair tread. I might actually show a bottom fixing with a channel underneath. So there's no top fixings. It's only a vertical channel fixed to the stringer of the stairs. And I'll click OK just to show you guys how much we've instantly changed by simply doing that. So now we still have the post in the middle, but we have most of our glass showing. We'll open up those settings once more by clicking Command T, clicking on that central post, removing it, going to our posts on the external side, making sure that we have no external posts showing whatsoever. We go into the node and we change our pattern continuity. So clicking on continuous pattern, clicking OK, we'll see all of our glass realign and a couple posts get reintroduced. Now there is actually a pretty easy way to get rid of these inner posts. All we have to do is come back into settings the last time, click on inner posts here, change that to none and click OK. That's the quickest and easiest way to get rid of those posts. We don't have to worry about them 
and our spiral staircase is pretty much done. Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below and don't forget about the like button. The like button helps with the YouTube algorithm. It really helps this channel grow, so I'd truly appreciate it. Because we're trying something new out this week, instead of seeing you next Monday, I will see you this Thursday.